Hey everyone, Alex here with Star Wars Explained, and I am thrilled to be sitting here with my favorite Star Wars author, Michael Stackpole. And I'm just, I'm not just saying that. <laughs> well, thank you, hell of an introduction, thank you. <laughs> Uh, I, anyone that watches my channel knows that I love the X-Wing books. My favorite characters are the pilots. Mm -hmm. uh, specifically, my favorite character is Biggs Darklighter. So, okay. as a huge fan, uh, I was wondering what made you choose Gavin Darklighter and carrying on the Darklighter legacy. Um, a chunk of that was, was based on the research that I had done about fighter pilots and, and all those things. You know, when you look at World War One and especially World War Two, you had... Uh, a lot of people who were underage volunteering for military service because they felt it was their duty. And I thought that it would be kind of cool to bring a dark lighter back in and to to have Gavin be that kid and, and kind of be the one that everybody in the squadron would try and look out for. But have him be very, you know, very competent and, and carrying on that uh, that tradition. So it just it just felt right to me to be able to to go ahead and do that because it fit with the whole paradigm and it it provided a, a connection into the past and yet a character that we knew everybody was going to be pulling for. Well, yeah, I, I love Gavin's story and I I love exactly that that they kind of just look out for him. Um, was there anything in specific that made you want to write about the starfighter pilots? Is that a topic that you chose or was that something that? Uh, Lucasfilm approach to you for? Well, the, the phone call I got from my editor at Bantam, Janet Silverstein, was uh, they want you to write military science fiction set in the Star Wars universe, you know, use the squadron, build it out with the, build it out with pilots and everything like that. So I got to um, pick and choose who I was going to have. One of the reasons why um, Hobby and um, uh, uh, the other one now, I've totally forgotten his name, uh, went over and, and, and Aaron used him in Race Squadron. Uh, uh, the reason we did that is because I wanted to be able to kill anybody in the, it, you know, we knew Wedge was not going to die because uh, he was appearing in later books. So we knew that. But I wanted to be able to have any of those characters be on the bubble and be able to die because I felt that that had a certain amount of tension um, uh, in it. So, you know, that's to a certain extent how those, um, how the squadron got built. And then it had its own dynamic. And then the other thing was, um, at the time the books were being done, nobody was certain, and matter of fact, guys at Bantam were pretty sure that these books would never hit the New York Times bestseller list. They always thought that they would be a, a, a lower level of sales because they weren't dealing with the major characters. So uh, I thought, well, let's see if we can maximize the, maximize the number of, of readers. Because Tim's books already had uh, Coruscant in the hands of uh, the New Republic, I said, let's base our story around the taking of uh, Coruscant. Because I said, if nothing else, people will read it for the history. Well, little do we know that there were tons of fans like you out there who loved Wedge, loved the pilots, and, and boy, when those books hit the New York Times bestseller list, and especially the third one, when Credo's Trap came out, Stephen King had five books on the paperback bestseller list in the, uh, for the New York Times. And nobody thought Crytos Trap would make it, and it actually knocked one of Stephen King's books off. And so that was, uh, I thought that was a lot of fun. So, <laughs> I, 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 That's kind of something that I prefer in Legends is your story of taking Coruscant yeah. and the whole campaign and that it took three to four books. Um, there, the new canon, it, it just kind of seems to have fallen fairly easily. Right, right, right. And uh, I really, I really preferred your version, but... Well, it, what was really funny is I decided that that's what we were going to do uh, before I'd actually read Tim's books because I was reading the existing books in chronological order. And uh, so I saw Tim at a convention and I said, you know, I said, my second book is going to be taking down the defenses on uh, Coruscant. And you made them really nasty. And he just gave me this smile and said, yes, I did. <laughs> and it's like, great. Thanks, pal. Uh, so, you know, I had to work really hard to try and make that be believable and, and how that came together. And yeah, the way you talk about um, having all of these new characters, uh, that worked really well because I remember uh, Oral, Quirg, the Gand right, guy, right. I, I was almost furious with you because if anything happened to him, I would have been very upset. But, <laughs> but that's, it, actually, he was kind of funny because, you know, I wanted to use all these, uh, use aliens. And I've always, I've always found exoskeleton creatures with exoskeletons just to be a lot of fun. So uh, in sending questions to Lucasfilm, I said, look, uh, I'd like to use a Gand, but all I've seen are, you know, the screenshots from about 10 seconds in Empire, 
and there's this one paragraph in this book you know it, what else what else is there and Lucasfilm sends me back a photocopy of a screen capture of him and the a photocopy of the paragraph that I'd already found with a little note going that's it knock yourself out <laughs> and so it was a lot of fun to be able to build him out and, and I I really enjoyed him he was a lot of fun because of the whole you know not talking about himself and and uh, uh Never saying I and that sort of stuff. I mean, oh, yeah, I, I loved that yeah. uh, that whole cultural thing where they kind of the more respected they are, the more they can refer to themselves instead of in the third person. Right. I thought that was a right. very cool detail. Yeah, it was, and and that was a lot of fun, and that was the that was really enjoyable working with Lucasfilm at that point is that they would allow us to do those really cool things and really make science fiction novels that that were fleshing out their universe and and allowing us to have content in there that you normally don't get in tie-in uh, material. So. Uh, well, I don't know if you've read uh, Aftermath Life Debt, but um, in that story, Wedge kind of puts together a new, I, I believe it's called uh, Phantom Squadron. Um, it sounds a lot like Wraith Squadron, and I know mm -hmm. that was Aaron's domain, but right. uh, if Lucasfilm were to approach you to write a new story about a new squadron, mm -hmm. would that be something you were interested in, or would you rather talk about something, a new subject matter? No, no, no. I, I, you know, if, if, uh, if they came to me, it, when you work in a tie-in universe, the, the people who own the property are the ones that come to you and say, look, this is, this is what we want you to do. Um, you know, if, if they decide that the basement is flooded, they call in a plumber, you know, in the house. And so if they decide that there's something that they want to cover and they think I can do it, they would call me and say, this is what we want to do. Um, so there are lots of things that would be fun to do. I mean, given the time frame, it, for me, it'd be a lot of fun to see where Corrin and his wife and his kids are in that time frame and what I could do there. It'd be fun to see where Gavin is, you know. So there's a whole bunch of stuff with, with characters that I've done seeing where they are now. Uh, as well if they came in and said, hey, look, you know, we want you to, um, you know, chronicle some people who are getting involved in this for the first time. I'd love to do that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, if they've got my phone number. You know, if they call, I, I'm sure we can work something out. I mean, it does seem like things are kind of trickling back in from Legends. Uh, I remember James Lucino in the Tarkin book kind of directly referenced things from the Plagueis book. Right. Uh, so if if you could choose just in your next book someone to like definitely bring back into the canon who would you do boy that's that's really really tough so maybe like what i choice. well yeah maybe what i'd say is um i put mara jade in charge of rogue squadron and then bring everybody else back mm -hmm. you know so we'd have rogue squadron yeah so so just give me give me give me 12 guys i'll bring yeah. people back yeah <laughs> uh, so um, when you write the books, you have like corn and you have mm -hmm. wedge and like you said we know wedge isn't going to die so is it more challenging or less challenging to work with an existing character or someone that you've made on your own? Um, it, it's very much of the same thing. If, if you look at the prohibition against death, what that really means is, and, and you see this uh, in the X-Wing books, because we know Wedge is not going to die, uh, and because Wedge is in a position of responsibility for people who are, his pain his growth arc is dealing with that responsibility so it doesn't matter I'd never have to threaten him with killing he just has to deal with the consequences of people having been killed and that gives him an emotional arc um, the other characters in in many books when I've had to make a decision who dies let's say I've got five characters that are going into a combat situation and I know I've got to smoke one of them um, uh, you know, I'll always pick the character I like the most because I know that that's going to hurt the most. Uh, and you really, and especially I think, authors have a, a moral responsibility when you're writing about war to not make it painless. You know, you can't have people just think it's all glory. No, there is pain, you know, and so, so you, need, you need some of that. I mean, you know, if, if readers think, if they feel like they've lost a friend, good, because then they might think twice about you know, yes, yes, let's all go off to war here or there. Um, at the same time, you know, we want to celebrate heroism. So it's a, it, it's an interesting thing. Uh, you know, killing characters, I, again, I think is necessary, and, and I actually kind of enjoy it from time to time. Uh, so, uh, uh, so that's just going to be part of it there. Characters you create by yourself, you get to figure out what their um, story arc is going to be, irre irrespective of whether or not they live or die. 
with characters who've already created, you have to take hints on what's gone before to make sure that the character is, is consistent. Um, but again, that's not really, um, it, there's not a, an easier or harder way to do it. It's just, that's just the nature of the beast. Um, shifting gears a little bit, I actually talked to Janine Spinlove yesterday oh, sure. as well, and she specifically cited you as one of her mentors and uh, as, a, as yeah. a huge help. So that got me thinking, just what is it like working as kind of a group with Timothy Zahn? Like, it feels like it's very collaborative and that you kind of have to see, well, what's coming out in your upcoming books? Do you set things up for each other? How does that go? Well, back in the days when we were working uh, with Bantam, uh, it was it was very easy to coordinate between authors and and keep informed as to what we were doing back and forth um, to make things work. I remember with I Jedi, uh, I had talked to Kevin a little bit about certain things. We were at a convention and I'd run some things by him, and then as I was coming down to the end of it, I gave him a call and I said, "Hey, Kevin." In your Young Jedi Knights books, do you do anything else with that Sith Temple and Exar Kun? And he said, nope. And I said, great, I'm blowing it up. Uh, and uh, so, you know, uh, so we, we had that ability to talk back and forth or, um, you know, the errant venture. I knew Tim was going to need that in vision. So in, uh, uh, in the back to war, uh, we give it to Booster. So it's going to be there for him in vision. Um, and we were able to do that as well, obviously, the 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 uh, X-Wing comics, because I was writing those as well as writing the novels, we were able to toss things back and forth. Um, since then, it's become a little bit more restricted just because of, of how they're shaping the property. But I know from, from authors talking to each other and from things that Aaron had said that there still was a certain amount of that going on. So I, I, it's cool because you're right, it is collaborative. And the whole sense of continuity is something I think the fans really, really enjoy. Yeah, I mean, now it kind of sounds like, because now they have the official Lucasfilm story group, but it kind of sounds like you guys were making your own back in the day. Oh, without a doubt. And, and the guys who are on the official story group, uh, you know, they were guys who were working for Lucasfilm back then. They were guys who were writing articles for the gaming magazines and stuff. So we're incorporating their stuff. You know, we're chatting with them. So, yeah, it, you know, what was sort of ersatz back then, you know, now is, is far more formalized. And now you just mentioned the comics, and um, a, maybe a lot of people don't know you've also have a background in game design. Right. Um, what kind of format do you like working with the most? Which did you enjoy the most? Um, each one has got its joys. I mean, it, writing short stories and novels, um, that's what I do the most. That's what I'm most used to, and I'm really comfortable in that medium. I enjoyed the hell out of writing graphic novels. I mean, I really, really did, because there was stuff that you could do... Um, in in storytelling there that you just can't do in 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 long form uh because you're coordinating with the art and it was a lot of fun to work with artists and and see them see what they were making out of out of what you uh had just written down on the page i mean one of the most uh, uh, it's really kind of sneaky but for a writer when you describe a two-page spread you write about two paragraphs to describe it and then this artist makes this massive piece of art and it's just so cool um, so I, you know, I certainly like that. Gaming is a lot of fun because there it's m the, the puzzle solving is more out in front because you're doing the math and, and having all of those things. And yet you know that, that players are going to come to this and they're going to interact with your property a lot more deeply than they will even the novels because they're going to be assuming the roles for role-playing games, assuming the roles of characters in your world. Uh, so they're going to get in there even deeper. And that's, that's very, very cool. So I, I just have to ask... Has the story group or anyone Lucasfilm? Are there any plans for a Michael Stackpole novel coming up? Not so far, but you know, I could. Uh, I mean, I could go back to Phoenix tonight, and there could be. Uh, you know, I could have voicemail from my agent saying, "Oh, by the way, you know." So yeah, um, and 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 look, if that happens, that's great. But uh, I remember when I was a thirty-something and got the call and said, "Hi, you're going to be working in Star Wars," and I remember how thrilled I was. And now to see someone like Janine get that same call. You know, I mean, I understand her joy, and it's like, look, if I never get called back, uh, that's okay. It, it's cool, right? That feeling's never going to leave leave from me. But it's nice to know other people are getting their opportunity. That's to not do. okay with me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, it needs to happen again. But well, and 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 it, like I say, it would be a lot of fun. I I would enjoy going back. But you know, that's just uh, uh, you know, I watching watching someone like Janine and other writers who are getting their shot, watching how happy it makes them, that's cool with me. 
Um, I believe in the forward of Outbound Flight, Timothy Zahn challenged you to a game of Star Wars Trivial Pursuit. <laughs> Has that ever happened? Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a convention in North Carolina, um, StellarCon. And uh, there used to be StellarCon now. It's a different convention uh, run by the same people. And uh, there, were, uh, there have been three charity uh, Star Wars trivia games. And the uh, first two, the first two times, uh, I had the same partner, uh, uh, Zainip, and and uh, we beat Tim and his team. The first time was just Tim. Uh, it was a it was a uh, one on one game. The second time, Aaron was thrown into the mix, and uh, so Zainip and I won both of those games. And then just recently, last year, uh, there was a third round. Zainip was not there, uh, and uh, and so Tim's team won. Um, which basically shows you who the weak link is on our particular team. Uh, all I was good at doing was hitting the, the R2 randomizer and figuring out what path we were going to go around the board. Uh, she knew all the answers, so yeah. Uh. <laughs> I, I, I'm, of course, huge into Star Wars trivia, and I actually started my channel because of the trivia contest here, oh, okay. and I wanted to right. study. Um, so I, when I read that, I, I, I had to ask you about it. <laughs> yes, we have played. <laughs> Um, so what was kind of your background in Star Wars? What brought you into the universe? What did you love about it before you got to write for it? Uh, you know, I, I saw Star Wars um, in the theater when I was uh, still in college and uh, really just enjoyed it. Um, you know, I thought it was a great movie. Saw it about five times, which is, you know, I mean, back then that was just unbelievable that anyone would go to the same movie for five times. And I've seen it m many times more uh, uh, now. Um, and then, you know, just kept following it as, as it went along. So I was, I, I didn't realize um, that, you know, in terms on the scale of being a fan of, of Star Wars, I was, you know, just kind of in, in the infancy. Um, uh, but I had a contract with Bantam Books and they needed somebody to uh, uh, write military science fiction set in that universe. They, they you know, they, they needed someone who could work fast, had done military SF, and, and I sort of checked off all the boxes. So they offered the books to me, and then, boy, then you really get, uh, you get a glimpse into the whole level of fandom. Um, and, and the cool thing for me is that people just love Star Wars so much, um, and the impact that it's had. I told the story to someone else recently. Um, oh, within a week of getting that contract, I was at dinner with a friend in a restaurant in New Orleans. We were at a, a, we were at a convention. And we were just getting caught up because I hadn't seen him for a couple of years. And so I tell him, hey, I've been offered these Star Wars books. And we're just chatting back and forth as you do with somebody you're getting caught up with. And uh, a young couple was seated at the next table and they get up and the young man puts a piece of paper in front of me and says, can I have your autograph? He had no idea who I was. I mean, you know, we weren't wearing labels, we were tags and, 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 but, and I just kind of looked at him curiously and he says, man, anybody's got anything to do with Star Wars, I want his autograph. Mm -hmm. And it was like, Okay, you know, that just tells you how much impact there is uh, and just how widespread that is. And, and because of the X-Wing books, uh, you know, I've been to, to Germany, to the Czech Republic, to Russia, uh, you know, going, going uh, uh, doing conventions and stuff. So Star Wars has been, just been great for me. And it's, it's just seeing that enthusiasm. I mean, when I grew up, Russia, I mean, it was the Cold War. And to, to go to Russia and be at a convention in St. Petersburg and, uh, uh, you know, being invited to take pictures with the local 501st group. It's like, wow. Uh, it's just very impressive. Yeah. Uh, well, where can people find you online? I know you have, is it stormwolf.com? Yeah, stormwolf You're on yeah. Twitter. Um, and then what else would you recommend a Star Wars fan read of yours that they might not have gotten into before? Well, you know, the, the Battletech novels ought to be coming back into print. So if you like military science fiction with a lot of politics and stuff like that, um, you know, those will be those will be available. Um, I do tons of uh, fantasy novels, uh, uh, both traditional fantasy novels in terms of very Eurocentric stuff. And that's the Dragon Crown War series. And then I did some more Asian flavored stuff, which was the uh, uh, the Age of Discovery series. So I'm just sort of all over the place because I, I um have a short attention span. Uh, so I want new challenges. I want new, uh, new and cool things. So. Well, thank you so much for talking to me. This is, oh, I've been looking forward to this all weekend. <laughs> okay, well, good. I'm, I'm glad to have uh, been able, to, glad to have been able to speak to you and I uh, hope you had a great convention. I did, thank you. Thank you so much.
Welcome.